Ladies and gents, welcome to an eight-player game, and we've got some kings, and if you follow community games, you probably know the drill, but in this case, the kings, if they do die for whatever reason, if they get a really bad flu and unfortunately pass away, why am I talking about kings dying from flu? There's no disease. Anyways, if the king dies, it explodes. We've got eight players here, which really are going to want the glory that is the being the champion of this eight-player game. Uh, and, uh, it should be a really fun one. Uh, we've got Mega Random here, and Mega Random's given us a very nice map, which I, for one, am excited for. There's a lot of wood towards the center, and I've also noticed, at first glance anyways, there's not a ton of gold. Sorry, just fixing something here. But, yes, uh, there's really not that much gold after the player bases on this map. Just little bits towards the middle. Um, alright, so let's get the introductions in, shall we? In the purple, we have someone who is in their first community game ever. Uh, this comes just moments after someone was saying that this is a rigged system. It's very hard to get into these games. People begin to believe all types of conspiracy theories. But Draconder made it in, and it was kind of funny in the little room we have when you finally get allowed back there. Ooh, it's a real sneaky, exclusive room. Purple's like, what is this? I've never seen this room before. Is this where I go? Am I in the game? Didn't even fully understand. Didn't even hear the name. Um, so anyways, playing as the Aztecs here. In the gray, we've got Paddington the Second. Not to be confused with Paddington Senior. I don't know if there's another Paddington. Playing as the Japanese. In the red, we've got King of Noob 5. Uh, playing as the Cumans. In the yellow, we have Golden Pincers. Pinchers. Playing as the Tootins. In the blue, we've got a Beaver Stalker, which... I don't know, man. Just saying that name out loud... It, it reminds me how crazy my existence actually is. What did you do today? Uh, you know, I just talked about video games. This guy named Beaver Stalker was playing. Like, what? Um, in the orange, we have Mr. Potato. Not to be confused with Mr. Potato Head. Very different, okay? Don't, don't confuse the two of them. Uh, playing as the Huns. In the teal, we've got Deadly Cookie. Playing as the Bulgarians. And then last but not least, we have Skirm Slayer. And, and if, if you really are looking to kill some time and you, you want a really good game, uh, I would suggest a game we had recently. Uh, and the, these two players, they fought over colors. Skirm Slayer straight up started picking on this guy and, and created this hilarious situation in a game because before the game started, that player wanted green. So Skirm Slayer is back, and Skirm Slayer was very chatty last time. Uh, and didn't do too well with the whole diplomacy side. So, there's lots of chatter already. Uh, Skirm Slayer says, We are by far the highest ELOs. They will team up on us. How about we hold together till the end? And Mr. Potato says, Hey, where exactly are you? And uh, Skirm Slayer is talking about being housed due to the chatter. 1,500 like you. Okay. I don't know, I don't know if Varnge was saying, where are you? Like, where are you positioned, or what is your elo? But yes, 1500 elo, apparently. And yeah, Varnge says, no, dude, on the map. Uh, I do not know the ranks of the other players, so it's good to know that there's two players around 1500 elo here. But guys, this is an approach that some players will take. And they take this approach, bear with me one second, I'm so sorry. I just got a little paranoid about some admin stuff. And I just gotta make sure... That I'm good to go in case something happens in my tournament. Okay, we're good. Um, shoot, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this is a diplomatic approach that a lot of strong players make. Because they know that they're not going to be trusted in the long run. So they can find someone else that is as strong as them. They feel like th they like their chances. And they don't have to worry about all the other players really all that much. All right. So again, three tiles or, or three piles of gold at the player bases. There's two areas of stone, and then everything else is all wood in the center, with the exception of a couple little two tiles uh, of stone or gold spread throughout. Also, trade is going to be incredibly difficult because you cannot build on the lily pads here. So, you know, I don't know how they're going to get good trade here. This honestly might be a game where Byzantines dominate because Byzantines have really cheap skirms and helps. Like, having access to units that don't cost gold could be epic here. Well, Skirm Slayer says, Hey, Perp, we are neighbors, it seems. I am next to you. Want to join me in Orange to win? Question mark. And this is Purple's first community game. All right? B 
beaver stalker's knees weak and palms are sweaty and vomits on his mother or, or sweater already. <clears throat> Sorry, um, but, uh, you know, so he's nervous. I imagine Purple's a little bit nervous as well. And, like, if you're lower rank, chatting is going to be very difficult here. I think some of the more entertaining Diplo players uh, end up being higher ranked because they have the skill to be able to maintain the chat as well as everything else. Where are we located, though, says Orange to everyone. Blue says, what game is this? Question mark. Lots of confusion at the moment. Okay. So, um, I, something I noticed when I saw the civs is there are very few new civilizations in this game. And I kind of like it. I mean, I'm not opposed to the newer civilizations. You know, there's one or two additions I've loved, one or two that have shocked me, you know, if you've heard me be wordy over the years. But, like, Byzantines, Huns, Aztecs, Japanese, Teutons. Like, those civs have been around a very long time. And then Bulgarians, Cumans, Berbers are a bit on the newer side. But even the Berbers being African kingdoms. I mean, African kingdoms was an HD expansion. So that would have been, like, maybe 2014 or 2015? I don't know. I forget. But I came into the game again in 2013. Uh, after my brother-in-law gave me a Steam gift card. I had never used Steam before, but I did have a laptop that I had just bought for college. And so naturally, I immediately loaded up Steam. And it's... I mean, it was April 9th. And April 9th, which was my birthday, sorry. And April 9th also just so happened to be the day that the HD edition came out on Steam. And I don't know if they had HD edition on the front page of Steam on April 10th. So had I waited a day, I don't know if I would have ever rediscovered the game or not and be here where I am now. But yeah, um, that was 10 years ago, man. And here we are, so. <clears throat> okay. I'm getting more messages about Titans League, so that's fun. Everyone's now allied. King of Noob did forget. So, give me a second. Yeah. <laughs> It's been a nightmare admin situation for a series in Titans League, an event that I will be covering a lot of this week, but there's lots of sets all the time. And I'm doing my best. But for now, we're not really missing too much. We're, players are trying to form their teams at the moment. Red says, by the way, was saving all of you as ally, but I wasn't confirming. Okay, so he's like, don't hate me. I just kind of didn't do it right. Now, Purple goes, hey there, we cool friend. It doesn't specify who exactly that message is going to. And Skirm Slayer is just like trying to gain as many allies as possible because I think Skirm Slayer knows he will be targeted later. Hey, Teal, you're between Orange and me. We were allied. Want to join Purpose in two. He's trying to form a scene. A team, rather. I have never been so uncomfortable trying to cast the start of a community game. This is really testing my skills. I'm still going to have to do some work here to sort out what server these guys are playing on tomorrow. I have no clue. The servers are crapping out on these guys. And there's a lot of emotion in the whole scheduling room here. So I'm working my best here. I wonder if we could get a scout to follow this. It's all Diplo chat right now. Just follow this. Skirm Slayer just wants a straight up 4v4. Straight up just self-preservation with that though, right? The main reason to do that is just so you, if you have a team, you're probably going to win with that team. People like that though. People don't like to break up against teams. Okay. The eagle's not moving, so I've chosen the wrong unit to follow. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Sorelius is yes. boo. We want to see blood and betrayal. I know, like, the, the way this game is panning out thus far, a lot of people aren't going to like. They don't like the idea of a 3v3 and a 4v4 game. They want to see things change, but I think those things would always change later on, right? And I think Skirm Slayer might actually be the one, the guy who's forming these teams, 
I think he may actually be the one who ends up being the type to break those teams later on. Okay. I think we're good here, guys. Again, I'm so sorry, but this is important stuff. Okay. So, Skirm Slayer has put all of his APM, all of his speed, into being the most chatty individual ever. Is that something that could possibly bring him some problems? If you talk to too many people, if you try and bully people around, or not bully, but try and be too much in control, I could maybe see someone who's been rather quiet on this team eventually being like, hey, not sure we like this guy, but I don't know if my read's correct on that. Mr. Potato's like, I'm 1500 ELO. I'm getting introduced to my new teammates. This is great. It's like the first day at school, you know? Seeing some old friends we've seen in games before the yes. previous year. And we got some new friends as well. Cool. God, this is like Skirm Slayer is like, I'm aiming for Camel Archers. Is that fine by everyone? Yeah, it's completely fine. It's completely fine. Mr. Potato says, let's kill the unfortunates, the noobs, the worthless baboons. And Skirm Slayer says, exactly. Listen, guys. I thought I was coming into this, okay? I thought I was going to be painting one person as a bully. And I think you know by my intro that that was probably going to be green. Just because of the previous games. He really likes the bully role. But Mr. Potato... Now, that might be a quote from something. It had a nice little ring to it. Let's kill the unfortunates, the noobs. The worthless baboons, but he's part of the bully club, that's for sure. And we'll see if everyone else figures it out. Beaver Stalker's over here, and he just hit Castlage. He's reaching out to talk to Green. There has been very little chatter from Paddington over yes. here. Very little chatter from King of Noobs. Yes. Skirm is like yes. paranoid. He says, please make sure to have chat only to the four of us. And funnily enough, like... Players are saying yes to other people. <laughs> I think, right? Yeah, like they're definitely including some yeses there, at least to some other people. Okay. So here's the look at the economy, guys. And this will really show us where the skill levels are. Um, booming is a big part of this game. Potatoes at the top. Right behind that's Paddington. Right behind that then is Skirm Slayer. And you do have uh, King of Noobs and Beaver doing a pretty good job. I think Berbers are an awesome uh, civilization to have in this type of game. You're... There's a massive storm outside. Apologies if you hear anything. Just Florida things in the summer. Yeah, I could see Camel Archers being a, a pretty dominant unit here. Still wondering how this is going to work with long-term gold income, because there's just not a lot of it. I think it'd be worth it to send villagers out here take some of this gold that games are so much better when we have a heal i agree with you wdw kid however i will say this the games where the heals just do healy things the whole time and you know roll with their healies i don't even know if you guys know what a healy is go with their healies through the whole game and roll over everybody those games aren't quite as fun you always like to see uh, some adversity and what? still more conversation. <laughs> Someone says this map is super ugly and Beaver Stalker says all maps are beautiful. <laughs> okay, we got to make sure we appreciate all maps, guys, okay? If you've ever called a map ugly, apologize for it right now. <laughs> Skirm says, don't worry, the map won't kill you if you trash talk it. Oh, that sounds like a, that sounds like a challenge. All my map makers are going to be going to town right now. It's like, if you don't... I don't even know how that would work. If you don't... I, I wouldn't actually want someone to have to say good things about the maps, but it would be kind of interesting where if you didn't do certain actions, certain aspects of the map would self-destruct. Okay, now Beaver Stalker changes his mind. He says, F this map, it's ugly. Wow, okay. Got it. 
Skirm Slayer is such a tryhard, man. I mean, I get wanting to win. I totally get it. But for some people in community games, it's how you win. But also, you know, if you have a reputation, you can't really change it these days, can you? You're stuck. People know you as the heel, so you might as well just bully to get victories. He says, good spot. Blue is four racks. Be prepared for a push. Super serious Skirm Slayer over here. 1500 ELO. We got to make sure we dominate. Wait, where are the racks? It says blue is four racks. Blue? Am I blind? I see. Oh, yeah, I do see them. Oh, up against the edge of the map. Oh, my God. How threatening are those four barracks? I'm sure this guy isn't just, you know, having a chill time over here. I do not believe four barracks far away from the enemies means intent. But I could be wrong. So, guys, Paddington the second, he's not part of that four-player team. And he's got a pretty good economy right now. Beaver Stalker says, I'm tempted to get supplies just to make T90 shout that. Well, don't worry. I, I wouldn't do it, actually. Don't research supplies because Skirm Slayer may use that as a reason to attack you. And look, he's like, he sees Blue say that. Blue's just having fun. And he instantly is, like, questioning his strategic decisions. Blue going biz longswords? Oh, my God. What's next? Orange is going to be like, yeah, he is a baboon. Who goes Byzantine longswords? <laughs> Blue is totally seen as the enemy right now. Yes. This is so funny. Skirm's like, Potato, you're close to him. If you need help, we will support you. <laughs> I find it so funny. Wait, blue doesn't blue is just chilling man okay well level of seriousness very high which we like to see orange says i think we should kill gray first because he's top score now that makes a little bit more sense we've got a team here and that guy's not in our team maybe we should make a move towards him it's certainly an idea but this game's going to go late, guys. And I'm concerned for Gray because Gray has not chatted to anybody. Right? We've got very different extremes here. Gray hasn't really said a word. Um, you know, I haven't seen much from Yellow. I think Yellow, Red, Gray, Purple, they should be having some discussions. I do believe, though, that Purple is going to be very happy that in their first community game that one of the better players sees them as valuable and is probably going to hold tight to that relationship. I don't like playing Diplo, but watching T90's top drama. Anything's, anything's drama if you think hard enough about it, you know? It is interesting, though. Like, we have really evolved uh, with these community games because people yes. will... Like, if I were to just spectate a random yes. Diplo game that wasn't a community game that I hosted, right? Just, just find a random game and no one knew who I was watching. It'd be completely different. There wouldn't be many tricks... I think it'd be a lot more direct and a lot more to the point. Honestly, it'd be very similar to Skirm Slayer right now. Just, hey, we're on this team. Let's kill them. Th that's what it is. But these days, you know, people, they make a lot of decisions based on the fact they know there's going to be viewers later and they know there can be videos and everyone might want to be a legend or whatever, right? Yes. Okay. So... Gray says yes to everybody in response to Blue about trade. Blue then says yes. And then Mr. Potato says yes for what? You guys have an alliance going on? Question mark with a sad face. And Blue says yes is a game. Okay, so he's trying to explain it away because he screwed up. And Gray now says, for how much I love T90's farm placement. And, and Green, he sees right through it. He goes, Nice orange, so we know it's a 4v4. Right? And it makes sense, right? So, like, they have their 4v4 team, and now they think Blue and Gray are talking about something. All they're talking about is trade. It's, like, the simplest little thing, but it looks really bad for them because orange and green have a plan. And I, I honestly, I as much as you guys want to see the betrayals in this game, and you want to see these teams break apart, I think it will have to happen late. And I think the people who are against Mr. Potato and Skirm Slayer will feel pain 
at least one or two of them. Once players start to go down, that's when the most successful teams start to have some problems. Because you work hard, you work long enough with somebody, and you, you have a lot of pride in that, and then eventually you start to think, what if they were gone? I think they're too strong. I think they could kill me now. And that's when you've got like four or five players remaining. Okay, so Skirm Slayer is going to be trading, which is why he's gone for double markets. Always makes sense to make a lot of markets. I do also think it makes sense to trade. Because the attacking normally doesn't start till later. We've even got five markets here from Mr. Potato. So trading away. Upgrades are going to be coming in. I imagine we're going to see Paladins from Mr. Potato. I'm not entirely sure. He could go Cav Archers too. He's going to add Archer Ranges now. Um... And then we have a signal from Skirm, and dude, he's dialed in. This guy is so laser-focused, and he signaled the trade. We've got to kill the trade. We are a team. Yellow says, hey, team, shall we begin to form plans? And yellow is talking to blue, red, and gray. So this is currently everyone's allies, so they can all kind of see each other's business, but it's basically a 4v4. Typically, I I mean, if you can just look at the player scores, right? The fact that three out of the four players in that team are at the bottom isn't good. But I think the teams that are a bit more proactive tend to have the, the, yes. the edge in a 4v4. Okay, but now we get to see the other side. Blue says purple and green seem pretty strong. Now, blue says what's the plan? And then says yes. And then says whose team? Now, Beaver Stalker might possibly be like 10% in on the other team, but I don't think they're truly going to trust him, anyways. Skirm Slayer says, Are any of them talking to you all? Hmm. No. Potato says no. Deadly Cookie says nothing. Shall we attack one? Skirm Slayer says, hmm, we could. Tato doesn't want to give him time here. They don't seem like wanting friendship, says Skirm Slayer. Yes. I think, I mean, like, the only one that really reached out, to be fair, was probably Blue. Yes, that's true. And I think that's something that the other team could have done a better job at. Oh, holy fishing ships over here for Paddington. That's an interesting approach. They already have something going on. Yeah, okay, so it's a 4v4. Who makes a siege? I need castles to make camel archers. I like how involved the team is here. I'm wondering if purple is going to, to think about some type of snipe. I think if you're going to try and snipe green, you have to do it way later because green is such... He, he's going to be so paranoid. And he's going to look over here. And this just doesn't look trustworthy to me. I don't think it's bad, right? You could just be protecting your king, but still. Hmm. Tons of production buildings going up. What's the composition going to be for gray? I'm not actually sure. A lot of players are over 150 eco now. Purple has 44 army, which is the most. Green here, or green, what am I talking about? Red's going to be on paladin, which is great. And then we have, ooh, Elite Conics for Deadly Cookie. That's a unit you don't see too frequently, but is a really strong unit. Let's attack, yes. says Potato. And Skirm Slayer says yes. Okay, but I don't think the other team is ready. So this should work pretty well. Now, if you are on the flank position, so if you're in Orange's position, and you are doing a successful job at killing someone... You are in harm's way if they wish to send their king on a suicide mission into your eco. So you do have to make sure this works. Like, you see how far behind the, the team in the northeast is? Red just says, I'm going to place markets there. Like, they're so late to getting this trade started. Hmm. And, you know, some of that skill, right? I think Golden Pincers was, was behind economically. Yellow says, I placed the market north of my base. Yeah, again, trade really awkward. 
but you still should probably do it. Paladin coming in for Mr. Potato. So Camel Archers are currently hidden here. Where is the king at right now? Oh, what a, what an interesting strat. Okay, so I was worried that Skirm had the king inside the castle. And then when we're going to see an attack, right? He's going to set the rally point and eject all of his units. And he could send the king forward by mistake. But he's got a tower right behind the castle. This is a pro community game move. This is a move that experienced community game members go for. And then what you do is you set that gather point into the castle. So if they kill your tower, it instantly goes into the castle as well experience blue says yo potato and potato says yes potato responds i'm pretty sure skirm slayer would not be very happy with this but we're just having a chat as neighbors beaver stalker yes. says i'm sure you've been recruited thus far Ooh, interesting and potato is very untrusting of the beaver and he says i'm sure you are too Purple says I'm ready, but he included, who did he include in that? He included that with yellow. Yes. Yellow's in on that, the low score player. You could actually pass some important information along. Oh, wow. Look at this. Hold on. I need to pause. Sorry. This is important stuff. Um, Blue says, I'm sure you've been recruited, but I'm suggesting we help each other out as, and when the time comes. Okay, couldn't finish this message. Orange says, but shall we make an alliance just the two of us? I can protect you from them for the time being. Nice. Ooh, yeah, we got some backdoor diplomacies. And for Skirm Slayer, there's no alternative motives. There's none of that. It's just like, let's go 4v4 and let's kill everybody. That's, that's what it is for Skirm Slayer. So he's like all about the team. Yeah, team. We trust each other, team. I like that from both blue and orange, right? Because if they could subtly work together they can, and look out for each other, they could start to pick off their own teammates over time or feed information or anything. I'm a talker. Some players hate that, says Beaver Stalker. You're a talker and you're a stalker. I get it. <laughs> Skirm Slayer is just barking out orders. Push now. Yellow has no army. And yellow says, purple said, perhaps the wrong chat setting, that he was ready. So he's kind of warning his team. Potato says, I love talkers. Blue says, same. Okay, cool. And Deadly Cookie says, I thought we were going for red. And Skirm Slayer says, yes, we have 4v3. All right. Skirm Slayer is like full meta. Let's kill everything. Rah, rah, rah. He's ready to kill. Okay. Let's go for someone. It's getting late. So... If the attack was going to be on blue, I'm really curious what orange would have done. Orange might not have taken that alliance. But because the attack's going to be here, he can have that deal with blue. Now, blue, in theory, should probably try and help here. But, I mean, gray should try and help. Gray's got trebs and champions and cav archers. But, I mean, I'm not seeing army. It's going to be teal. It's going to be green. It's going to be purple. They're all going in on poor king of noobs. And... The army composition is just going to be too much to deal with here. The red has declared war on teal. He's also declared war on green. All to be expected. But at the very least, you lose a lot of economy. And meanwhile, there's actually eagles from purple. Remember, they were all allied, right? So purple got to look over here and see that there was only one building with a flag. So he knows that's where the king is. And... Uh, th that king could die pretty quickly here, and I also don't know where it will go when the king is ejected from this castle. So I always feel bad for the people that are initially attacked in these moments, because they feel like they didn't really have a chance to play. But they just were on the wrong side, right? That's essentially what it comes down to, and there was no support from Grey, to be fair. No support from Yellow yet. And, well, that's going to be the end for Red. King of Noobs. Dies first. However, King of Noobs, you're part of our story here, okay? Yes, you died, but you're part of our story. Red says, oh, well, feel bad for you, buddy. Let's see how this goes. So there will be an explosion here. This will affect Gray's trade pretty significantly. Potato congratulates Purple. And there you go. And they immediately want to move on to Gray, because Gray was high score before, right? So, 
But I, I foresee the same problem. It's just that there's no real support for Gray. Yes. And I don't know, like, does it even make sense for Yellow to come try and save Gray? Because he just dies then as well, right? <laughs> Red says, I forgot it was Regicide. Whoops. It honestly might not even be a good play for Yellow to save Gray at this point. You're already a man down on your team? As sucky as it is, you just gotta let him die. I don't know. You are trading with them. There should be some sense of loyalty, but it's not like they talked a lot. Anyways, Blue is currently trying to defend. Blue is helping, okay? Uh, Teal has not turned on Blue yet, which is kind of interesting. But remember, Blue has a deal with Orange to not attack each other. Anyways, King could possibly eject here from this castle. Orange's Paladins are there. There's Hussars from Teal. And Gray doesn't say help. He says Elop, which probably means help in his own language. Um, he's, he's scared, he's stressed, he's terrified, and he doesn't want to meet the same fate as Red, but it was... We have the two highest ranked players getting two other players with them at the start of the game, and they're just... They're ready. And I, I, I called it all the way back, right? If you have the two highest ranked players... On a 4v4, that side's going to kill some people. They just will. It's how the cookie crumbles. But will Gray go down? Gray's a pretty important character here. If Gray could survive, I think he could if he tries to eject into the tower. The longer Gray is alive, the more time there is for some backdoor deals on the other side. And then maybe for Yellow to do something. Gray does hold on. Well played from Gray to hold on. It's not going to be easy, though, because his main base in the middle is going to get cleared up. I think he's going to lose trade as well. Meanwhile, we've got some capes from Yellow. Um, Yellow could offer emotional support, possibly, but not really any strong military support. The problem with Teutonic Knights would be that the Camel Archers would destroy that. And Blue is still trying to defend, remember. Um, Blue is not attacking Orange, though. And I don't think it's obvious enough for Orange's teammates or Blue's teammates to realize that. But it's worth noting... That they are actually still allied. Even though blue is defending gray and orange is attacking gray. Yellow, attack Aragne. Okay, so gray's asking for help. Sorry, I love it when people have typos. It's completely understandable. I'm not trying to make fun of them. I mean, I am trying to make fun of them, but I would typo as well, right? So we can make fun of each other. You guys make fun of my farms. I, I don't feel bad about it. Anyways. We have... Green saying only yes. to orange, I try to snip blue. Okay, so orange earlier, he went to blue or blue came to him and they made a little side deal. And here comes potato and potato says blue. He's going to snitch yes. guys and blue's like, yes. Orange says green is going to try and snipe you. Take care. Oh, I love it. What a great decision from Blue to try that deal earlier. So many players don't try it, guys. Players just sit back and they're like, well, I guess this is my team and my team's going to lose. No, you got to try and chat a little bit. Anyways, King's still in harm's way here for Gray. Yellow, I think, is on the way. But I don't know if he'll get here anytime soon. And... Gray really struggling, even though he has so much army. He's stabilized here, but I think he's forgotten about his king. Again, I can only hope for his sake that his king is going to go into a tower here. I'm guessing he was making samurai and he set the rally point somewhere, but he doesn't know that king is out. And Potato sees it. And that king's likely not going to be garrisoned, which means it will die here. There's yellow, by the way. King, though. Is headed towards purple. Maybe this was intentional. Oh, he's doubling back and he's going to die. Okay. He noticed in the final moments there. And Gray is dead. This explosion shouldn't do too much. Uh, besides clear up the buildings that he already has. Purple's pumped about it. Green's pumped about it. And this has so far gone very much according to plan for the Skirm Slayer team. Yes. All right. Deadly Cookie says blue now. And now Orange's whole team wants to go for blue. They're picking them off one by one. What does Orange do here? 
I mean... He's warning him again. He says, Blue. <laughs> They're coming to you now. Yeah, but what do you do? You kind of have to fight with your team. Maybe Blue could hold. Blue's scrambling up a bunch of Bombard Towers in defense. Uh, this is... I, I do not see how Orange and Blue can make... Like, this love story that we all want to work, I'm not sure how it can ever work. Orange would have to pick a side, and he's going to have to pick a side soon. Here goes Yellow. He's like, if I move slow enough, no one will ever notice me. He takes no damage from these Hussars. And Yellow turns on Orange now, and he's probably going to turn on Teal, and he probably feels like he has to. Orange could snipe one of his teammates. Yes, he could. I think the most valuable teammate is, is or the, the strongest of all the players that he could maybe try would be Skirm Slayer, but I don't know if you could kill Berbers with Huns, and I think Skirm Slayer may notice. Blue does say thank you to Yellow, though. But meanwhile, Orange is, is still fighting for his team, and he's going to try and kill this king, and Yellow's now on the run. Yellow noticing that. Now, I mean, Yellow could try and get his king to someone else's base, but I think if he runs now, he just it'll just die. He's moving, though. Okay. Blue says not potato. I'm telling Yellow to stop. Oh, my God, dude. Yellow's your true teammate. Blue, <laughs> Blue loves potato, and he's, he's trying to tell Yellow to stop attacking potato, even though potato is, like, attacking Yellow. Ha, <laughs> ha. Is that selfish? That's funny to me. That is really funny. <laughs> yeah, don't attack the guy that's trying to kill your king. What are you doing? Well, I mean, I think yellow knows he's going to die. So he should... I mean, he doesn't get any more power from his units with the king being for but I think he's just going to try and kill someone with this thing. Stop attacking orange. Yellow, stop. Okay. I mean, you want to explain it to him? Do you want to say, like, I've got a deal? You can't just tell this guy who's on his deathbed to stop. Orange, this will be over pretty soon, and we all know that's his green. After that, we, the initial two, go for the top two. Orange is responding to the message. Orange is planning to exist for a very long time in this game, and Yellow has sacrificed himself. Is there going to be any warning from any of Potato's teammates? Skirm says, did he delete it? Hmm, what could possibly happen here? I wonder. Well, Golden Pincers, well played, my friend. Way to go out with a bang. Blue says, they will come for you soon, Orange. And Orange is... What? He's alive! Wait, what? Holy crap. Okay, so I'm so sorry. I, I just assumed he was dead, and I was thinking about what to say so I could make it sound epic. So we have these <laughs> these alerts, and you, so you can look, right? And it gives you some time. You see these random units, and he noticed in the final moments, and he clicked it away, and he's just like, no, 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 no. And oh my god, that was so close. Just a couple tiles away from death. Mr. Potato lives. Now, they were probably all looking, right? Green was, was unsure on how he died. They weren't sure what happened, and Orange can't believe it. Okay, I've got a prediction. I've got a prediction. So just a minute before this, Skirm Slayer was telling Orange, it's you and me, buddy. Okay? It's gonna be us till the end. I bet you any money, Skirm Slayer sees how weak Orange is right now and realizes he's vulnerable and goes to kill him. Okay, I have so little faith. Never mind. He's sending resources to him and he says some support. I'm such a jerk. You can come back easily. Oh, he's being so nice. Okay. Forgive me for assuming that, Skirm Slayer. I really... I'm the worst. Anyways, Yellow says, sorry guys, I played really bad this game. I wouldn't be that upset. I feel like it. the 4v4 games, this just happens. And um, it, it was just one of those games, okay? It's just one of those games. I, I called it at the start. We kind of knew it was going to go this direction. Blue is our wild card, though. Because Blue's still alive. And Orange is trying to encourage his teammates to go after someone else. And he says, let's go for Teal next. And Teal is like sandwiched right in their trade. Teal has really helped. I don't think that would actually be a wise move. 
Um, but yeah, like, blue is is only still alive because Orange is vouching for him. Teal, we will need infinite rams against blue. I don't know if Skirm Slayer saw the message. And then Orange says, yellow for the record, you turned on me first. Yeah, but for the record, yellow was trying to defend his homeland, all right? Oh, you hit me first, bro. But yeah, you were like beating up his friends and family, so. Sorry, but not too much. All right, hell of a guy, Mr. Potato. Real nice guy. <laughs> we need to kill Teal ASAP. Only to you, Orange, this was. Okay, Yoda. So they're bat planning on backstabbing Teal while also asking Teal to mass a lot of rams. I will say this. Green and Orange have done an excellent job keeping their, their mini alliance quiet from Purple and Teal. They haven't made one mistake there, and they have been very chatty with each other. There's, there hasn't really been a moment where they're not chatting to each other. Can you spare some gold? And Teal set, receives some gold from Skirm Slayer and says, I only have 2k right now. You get more soon if you remind me. Meanwhile, he is 5k, but whatever. He rounded down. Don't worry, Orange. Blue will take time to go down. Beaver Stalker is just happy to have a friend. And he says, what's the plan to Orange, his only friend, sacrifice me? Question mark. And honestly, that might be the only way that Orange has a chance at winning this. He lost so much in this game. Like, not having the castles, not having the vills hurts so much. And I'm not sure Huns can necessarily do well either. Bulgarian Longswords, even though they're strong, also is not going to be it against Cataphracts. And Blue's King is just talking game plan, I guess, with his people. But it's not the place I would really want my king. Trebs from purple. Camel Archer's here. Purple's now going to turn on blue. What green wants, at least, is he wants blue to go down next. He then wants to kill teal with orange. He'll then kill off purple. And then he's going to have some 1v1 deal with orange to end the game. That is the opposite of what the viewer wants, right? Some viewers might want that. I feel like that's not what people want. That's like the predictable approach. Anyways, blue defending. Little ting, ting, ting action here with halves and pikes. The so blue will hold for a while. So what they said was correct. It would take blue some time to go down. Blue, I don't think blue knows where his king is. And no one's going to expect it to be out in the open. Would be interesting if Purple had the guts to go for a snipe. But again, first community game, you're part of a team, you probably weren't expecting that. I could see Deadly Cookie going for it, but he has definitely seemed very pro-team here as well. Orange, one more thing. Meanwhile, Blue calls him bullies. Don't mess up chat. Okay. So he, he is reminding Orange not to screw up the chat. It's important we don't get caught. <laughs> and Potato says yes. We we gotta snipe Teal ASAP, man. Alright. I mean, Blue lost his castle. Blue's king is... <gasps> if he hide, Where's he going? Where's he going? Is he gonna hide with Orange? That would totally let the cat out of the bag. If he tries to hide with Orange. Oh, <laughs> that's what I want. Hey, Orange is your friend. Yes, go to Orange's base and hide there. Oh, boy. Blue's is passing. I think Blue might actually just off himself here. Which would normally be more entertaining, but it could end up being less entertaining if he just kills Teal, because that's actually who Orange and Green want to die next. Orange, mind using those Paladin, says Teal. And oh, God. that's that Orange hasn't been attacking Blue. And Teal calls him out for it. This is really the first time where Orange could have, and maybe should have rightfully been called out. Okay, so what's happening here? Blue got hit by Teal's castle. 
he can't, guys, he can't make it to green. He just can't. Orange, turn on blue. Skirmslayer's not going to trust that for a second. Thank God Deadly Cookie didn't get ballistics. But Deadly Cookie's going to be dead. I think blue wants to die here. Oh, boy. I mean, this has played out perfectly for the for Potato and Skirm Slayer. The Potato Skirm. The the Slayer Potato. The pota pot Player. I, I don't know. Teal has no clue. And this explosion should range this king. Orange saved himself last minute. But they're attacking Blue's base. They expect it to be there. And now Deadly Cookie is out. Well done from Beaver Stalker to hit the other team. Also love how Skirm Slayer says no as if he didn't really want Deadly Cookie to die. Deadly Cookie realized in the final moments, probably frustrated, but it happens. The explosion will affect Green's trade. Purple. I don't know if you expect this, but you've gotta you've gotta make your move now. No way, blue did this question mark? Hmm, this is a sticky wicket. <laughs> this is purple. <laughs> purple. I don't know if you know their rank or if they were been talking to each other this whole time, but you need to make a move now. Skirm Slayer says, damn, what now? Hmm, I wonder. I wonder what will happen now. And I think, like, Mr. Potato had two friends that you could potentially work with in this game. One of them died, but now you have a backup. And actually, it was his backup that died in the first place, so. I feel like normally what happens here, though, is the two lower score players go for the top player. Let's go for perp, then we'll 1v1. Yes. That's like, that's a death sentence for you, though. And purple says the ultimate betrayal. Green says maybe, who knows? Though you are toast, purple. This game has gone exactly as Skirm Slayer drew it up at the start. He wanted to form the strongest team and pick off everybody else on the other side, then pick off the weak links left in the team, then end up being number one. Will anything change here, or will the ultimate plan work? Now, Aztec Eagles are very strong. They do a lot of attack. They have high pierce armor, so it could be good against Camel Archers. And Purple's done the right thing to make a move now instead of waiting for Orange to come in and help. Camel Archers do decent damage against Eagles, though. And the Castle Fire is certainly going to help. And we'll see. Also, I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to say this because I'm going to say this because we're like 10 minutes behind when this game is. If you play in this game and you're alive in this game, I don't want to see your chat messages on my stream at all. All right. As far as we know, you're everything's good. Nothing. Again, it feels like a very obvious thing, but it's also been extremely obvious that Potato and Skirm Slayer have been working together this entire yes. time and... No one really called him out on it. Okay. So, Purple can't believe it. Purple's like, what? How could this ever be? And honestly, he might be upset with Orange because Orange... They, they should maybe be going for a sandwich here on green. Number one score by a long mile. I feel bad for Purple here. Yeah, there, there's no way Eagles can do this against Paladins and Camel Archers. The only way that you could possibly end this game and have everyone fall in love with you if you're purple is try and get your king to someone's base and delete it green is just loving life his whole plan has come together here he says destroyed as they kill the eagles and he feels like this is just going to be the perfect ending there's going to be so many people that don't like me for playing this way but i don't care because i'm a winner baby i am a freaking winner all i do is win Camel archers are bust. Let's go. Berbers. Thank God for the random into Berbers. And I didn't get some other crappy sieve I don't like. Purple says fine. But orange will betray you. The gods foresee it. Ooh. I mean, green's already probably really paranoid about that. He has army here waiting. There's a flag on this TC. So green and orange probably feel like the king is there. But the king is here. The king is actually here. It is heading towards Skirm Slayer's base. 
the man who's had a plan and will it go according to plan? They're looking. They're like, wait a second. I think that King, and he heard the noise. He definitely heard the defeated noise, right? He heard it. He looked. He saw he was dead. He thinks, he thinks the king died in the base. He thinks the king died in the base. It did not all go according to plan. Skirm Slayer thought he had it perfect. And he's dead. And that, ladies and gents, is why we always need a heal. <laughs> because every single thing in this game went exactly as Green would have wanted until that very moment right there. Uh, Orange didn't end up betraying Skirm Slayer. Uh, he, he, they would have had to fight each other, of course, had that not worked from Purple. But Purple said the gods foresee it. And, well, uh, the gods certainly foresaw, foreseen, for, for soup, for, for predict. I can't. Uh, anyways, yeah, the gods destined green to second place there. Um, that was a very nice finish to that game. I have to applaud the final three, though. Well played, green, orange, and purple for making it as far as you did. I think that, like, there's no way that Mr. Potato could have known that that was going to happen. But I think green played everything as he should have. I think that purple did as well, right? The second you're 2v1 there, don't hesitate. He could have hesitated. So many people were like, no, I don't want to die. You're going to die, okay? Be realistic about it. And then try and do something with your king. Um, it was a little brutal at times, obviously, because since this started off with a 4v4. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there were two instances. Three instances where uh, people dying in this game uh, forward affected the game massively, right? Orange having to reboom when he almost died up against yellow. Uh, blue killing off teal. And then there, purple killing off green. And that's why I like Exploding Kings, honestly. Like, that's a good example of why I like Exploding Kings, because if it's not Exploding Kings, I think this is far more predictable. And uh, Skirm Slayer, Mr. Potato have their 1v1. Berbers are just simply a better civilization than Huns, in my opinion. And I think Skirm Slayer had the better eco as well. Great game. And uh, way, to, way to play, I think, what was your first community game there, Purple, because that um, <laughs> certainly goes up there as far as community game moments are concerned. Uh, 500 kills there for purple in that game. Not bad. Uh, it actually had more kills than anyone, but that does that incorporate the king? Okay, well, the king helped, maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm looking here, and, and after the king dies, the number somehow goes up. <laughs> he killed 100 units with the king. So the king helped. Um... As far as Eco is concerned, remember, trade was going to be awkward on this map, but not for Mr. Potato. Mr. Potato had 37k trade. And Skirm Slayer with 20k trade profit as well. Um, I'm trying to think of more to say about this one. I guess Mega Random didn't really give us or give them an easy go at this, right? The trade would always be more awkward because they couldn't build in the corners. And there wasn't a lot of gold to be mined as well. But I, I enjoyed it. Um, I, it was the perfect ending as far as the game flow is concerned. And I hope that my commentary did it justice. Sorry for some of the weird issues I was dealing with uh, with some admin stuff at the start of the cast. Uh, and, and everyone on YouTube, hope you enjoyed and didn't mind that too much. And good community game.